All right, so the first type of specificity is to make a specific promise. And this is one of the simplest things that you can do to juice up just about any lead magnet. To really look at the offer itself, look at exactly what you're delivering and ask yourself, you know, how can I make the promise more evident, more specific? How can I really speak to those specific desired and results that my market wants? And this is an example of a book. I'll, I'll, I'll admit ahead of time, this is mildly PG-13, but I think it really drives the point home on the importance of a specific uh, lead magnet, certainly a specific lead magnet title. So this was a book that was published in the 1980s by a lady uh, named Nora Hayden. And the book was titled Astrological Love, okay? Astro logical love. And in this book, she was going to, I guess, show you how to love astrologically. The problem is, is that no one knew what that meant. What does it mean to love astrologically? Nobody wakes up saying, oh, I want to, I wish I knew how to love more astrologically, right? Just nobody knew what the heck it was. And therefore it didn't sell particularly well. The book wound up going out of print uh, after, after limited sales. And again, we do this all the time. We do this as marketers. We do this as business owners. We come up with very cutesy names for things. We get very proud of them. We'll, we'll develop our own vocabulary and think this needs to be the title, you know, of this thing that we're putting out in front of the market. But that's not the case. If you want to come up with a, you know, unique vernacular vocabulary that can all be very good for establishing authority, but you don't want to do that as the bait that you're fishing with. Okay. You might want to do it after somebody's consumed a lead magnet, then you can explain to them how you have this, you know, proprietary methodology that has all these fancy buzzwords. But now in the early stage, get rid of the buzzwords. Stop talking about yourself and start talking about them. So in this title, Nora Hayden is talking about her product. She's talking about this concept of astrological love, whatever the heck that is. Well, I don't know whether it was Nora or somebody who was around her, but they said, you know, really, this is actually a pretty great book. It just needs a title change. So that's exactly what they wound up doing. This book was actually republished, same author, fundamentally the exact same content was republished um, a little more than a decade later under the new title of how to satisfy a woman every time and have her beg for more. Now, I'm pretty sure that most, uh, most uh, gentlemen out there, um, this title resonates with you far better than this one, right? So most men, the concept of loving more astrologically, I don't know what it is and I'm not sure I even want it if you tell me what it is, but satisfying a woman every time and having her beg for more, ding, 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 I think I can figure out exactly what you're talking about there. No need to uh, tie up those loose ends. I got it. I'm in. I want it. Now, so was it effective? Well, yes, it was. It wound up uh, becoming a number one New York Times bestseller, uh, selling over 2.5 million copies. Again, the same basic content, same author, different title, making a specific promise. This is a good example, right? Don't you know, don't get, you know, trapped in your own ideas. Now, I'm not immune to this. Let me show you an example of where we failed in this particular um, endeavor. If you look at the name, this, this, well, let me, let me go back over here. So one of the markets that we're in is in the survival and preparedness space. And when we originally went into that market, this was our offer. You could see we offered six survival reports that they would basically teach you everything. And I see this done a lot of times, right? People, They'll come up with this, this vast array of package. And if you've ever, you know, if you saw the, the, the movie Napoleon Dynamite, right, where, you know, his friend Pedro runs for, you know, president of the, of the school and his, his basically his pledge was vote for Pedro and I'll make all your wildest dreams come true, right? Vote for Pedro. I'll make all your wildest dreams come true. That's what a lot of us are doing with our lead magnet offers. Opt in and I'll make all your wildest or worstest in the case of the survival market dreams come true or not come true, right? That's what we were saying. If you sign up, we're going to show you how to survive disasters, pandemics, economic collapse, break down the civil order, blah, 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 blah. We're also going to show you how to grow your own food. We will make all your wildest dreams come true. This wasn't nearly as effective as when we just took one of them and broke it out and said, Hey, how would you like to know how to grow enough food to feed a family of four in just four square feet of space? even if you don't have a yard, right? Now this is specificity stacked upon specificity stacked upon specificity. So we want to, in this report, we're going to show you how to grow food. We're going to show you how to garden. Okay. that's fine. I've, you know, uh, I know how to garden. No, thanks. No, no. But in this one, we'll show you how to grow enough food to feed a family of four. Oh really? Well, that's interesting. Yeah. In just four square feet of space. So you don't even need a yard. Do you see how we're layering the specificity there? 
right? Family of four, four square feet of, uh, of space, even if you don't have a yard. This worked twice as well as this one, right? Double the opt-in rate over here compared to when we were offering everything. But check this out. The actual title of this particular report was Growing Up, the Ins and Outs of Up and Down Gardening. You get it? Because this is actually a report about vertical gardening. And if you know how vertical gardening works, you know, instead of having the beds all spread out, you know, you grow them up. So the idea was growing up, get it? Because it's vertical gardening, the ins and outs of up and down gardening. Get it? Get it? Pretty clever, right? Pretty clever. We thought it was so clever, we put it on the cover. That's what we titled the report. Stupid. We were stupid. This was our version of astrological love. We're going to teach you growing up the ins and downs and up and down the ins and outs and of up and down gardening. We thought it was so clever, but nobody knows what that is. Nobody wakes up saying, "Gee, I really hope today I can stumble upon a report that is going to discuss the ins and outs of up and down gardening." Speak to the conversation that is going on in the mind of your customers, not in the one that you are having with yourself or in the ones that you, your business partners, the agency that you're working with, the marketing consultant, not the ones that you're having with one another. You're too close to it. You're too close to it. Get out of your bubble. Get out of your box and think about your customers. Make a specific promise, okay? Make a specific promise. Speak to their desired end result, their desire to feed a family of four in just four square feet of space even if you don't have a yard. Their desire to not love astrologically, but to satisfy a woman every time and beg for more. Speak to their desire and result by making a specific promise, and I can assure you that in and of itself will give you a nice, nice, nice bump uh, in, in conversion rates.